For this activity, we're going to look at Paul Klee's painting, Fish Magic. One of the things that Paul Klee did was he worked with poetry and music, his imagination and childlike symbols and hieroglyphics and geometric shapes. So when we look at his work, the students and yourself, you'll be able to identify and discuss these things. So in Fish Magic, there's obviously fish, but you can talk about the fish's different shapes and colours and the lines. The fish aren't in water, they're going across a garden. There's um, a wiggly shaped person waving, there's flowers, the geometric shapes, there's what looks like the moon, planets. There's a lot going on. And we're going to break this lesson into two parts. The first part is going to be a play-based lesson where the students get to experiment and just have fun. And the second part, we're going to bring back some drawing skills. So this would be for levels three and four. And I'm just gonna go over what equipment we're using because we're using some different equipment. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is we're using um, a special mineral paper. This paper, is special because it holds liquid. We're going to use food dye. The food dye won't absorb and break the paper. It holds it and it does some other things too, but we'll get into that a bit later. So you need mineral paper, water, pipettes, straw, We've got food dye. For the second part of the lesson, you're going to need Posca fine liners, charcoal and hand sanitizer, and you can have skewers as well. We're going to do the first part. So take a sheet of mineral paper and you can feel straight away that this is not like cartridge. So we have the mineral paper. I've got three food dyes. I've got red, blue and yellow, but you can use any colours. There's pink and purple, but these are the three I've got at the moment. I have a water sprayer hand sanitizer, pipette, straw and skewer for the first part. So what I'm going to do is put some of the food dye onto the mineral paper first. There's a few ways you can do this. One with the pipette. Or you could do it with the straw by, if you don't have pipettes, by holding the straw in and then letting go. So there's two. Then you've got the water sprayer. So if I spray the food dye, then you can use the straw to blow. And then as we build up and this becomes quite full, if you drop some hand sanitizer on, it disperses the colors and goes into it. So at this stage, I'm just going to play and experiment. There are no rules. This is completely play-based and sensory, and it's all about fun experimentation.
Okay, so now my work is very wet and it's very full and it's lot, lots going on. So I've got some nice big puddles here and I've played with my colour. I've enjoyed watching the yellow be mixed with the blue and turned to green, so you've got a colour lesson. And now I'm going to add some hand sanitizer. You'll get two different effects. You can drop it close and gentle, or you can drop it from a great height and it will splatter. So I will show you both. I'm just going to move that a little bit away from me. I'll drop it from a great height. And I love this because it looks like space. And you can see where it hits the colour and it's breaking up and it's doing its own special thing. And you can get a skewer and you can move it around a little bit. You can also blow it. You can put it on gently. And you can reapply food dyed back on top. That's what I was talking about when I said there's no rules. It doesn't matter what you do, it's completely playful. Okay, so when you've had a good old play and you're really happy and you've got this beautiful organic colour and movement and it is very dreamlike and it's very spacey and that quality is what Klee had in his work and you've just reproduced that and this will become your background. For the second part of the lesson, the background is dry. You're going to study the painting, Fish Magic, and you're going to look for shapes the students can identify with. I've chosen the fish shape, and I have chosen to reproduce the fish shape in as many varieties as I could. So you could get the students to make a sheet, a rough copy sheet of different shapes of fish like this. before they start their good copy and then you can help them out with their drawing if need be. So once you have an array of shapes and you're ready to go, you take some soft black charcoal or, or dry pastel and the students are now going to draw their shapes onto the background. Now they need to be wary, I'm left handed so I'm going to work right to left and I'm gonna be careful where I rest my hand because we're using pastel and this does smudge easily. The students need to be aware. You can give them a scrap piece of paper and if they need to rest their hand, they can rest their hand on the scrap piece of paper because we don't want black everywhere. We wanna make clear shapes. So I'm going to get on with work now and draw some fish shapes over my background. Once you've drawn your fish shapes with the soft pastel, we're going to smudge on the outside of the fish. So gently take your finger and the idea is to make a shadow around the shape, but we're not completely getting rid of the background. The background is going to sort of rise up underneath. So you'll see what I mean as I do it. So I'm just going to smudge this out now. So I'm gently rubbing around. I'm being quite careful not to go on the inside of the fish because I want to keep those beautiful colours that we've made quite clear and just dull the colours around the background.
So once you've done this, we're up to our last step and that is just putting in those really nice fine lines and details to make the picture pop. So once we're finished with our charcoal soft pastel, we just fix the work with fixative, quick spray, make sure your workplace is ventilated and just put that aside to dry. While that's drying, which won't take long, it's a good idea to discuss with students the type of line work they're about to do. We're going to use Posca fine liners, paint pens, and we're going to add details to the work. We're looking for uh, those little details that make the work pop. So fish scales, we're going to use a bit of cross hatching, diamonds, semicircles. So the students can make a cheap sheet and that's what I'm going to do now. So on my fish, I might do scales like this. Doesn't have to cover the whole fish, it might be in part. I might do diamonds by cross hatching wide. And then I might even do some smaller areas by cross hatching smaller. I might do wavy lines, or zigzag lines. I might do a mixture, a pattern, so a straight line, a wavy line, a straight line, a wavy line. I might just flick the pen. So students can make a sheet of mark making and it's a good idea for them to look at each other's work, share the ideas and have a real wide variety before they start their good copy. So someone always thinks of something different. So once you've finished your cheat sheet, you can go back to your final work, final piece. And now with the Posca paint pens, we're just going to put those details in. And that's what I'm gonna do now, work on the details. The fine liner is actually sinking into the colour in the background, so you do get the mark, but it's quite soft. It's not a vibrant mark, it's a subtle mark. And I'm going to try to use a bit of line variety and colour variety. So I am going to just really try to change my lines as I get to different parts of the fish. So there we have it, our fish magic, and it has a beautiful dreamlike quality, and now we can look at how we're going to display it. So we've done our background, we've had our playfulness and our sensory, we've had our structure and our shape, and then we've had our line work. So in our art elements, we've looked at line, shape, and colour. Because there is a lot of black on this work, I wouldn't be too keen to mount it on black. So I would mount the finished work on a coloured sheet. You might want to experiment with a few and then display. 